and welcome back to the Nasty Podcast. I'm Mirza, and, and with me... I'm Nicoletta, and we are here to bring you the Nasty Podcast from our Nasty Talks. From our own build of crazy stories, and as always, let's talk about sex, baby. Yeah, let's talk about what happened to you. What happened to you? I mean, um, for our listeners that don't see this in a video, Mirza has his become front extremely part. sexy. Oh yes! Oh so sexy. With se- a scar. So, so sexy. So sexy. Right here. Yeah. Uh, his uh, front part of his head is shaved, and uh, he has some stitches, in, in there like a little bit higher than his forehead. So what happened? Hashtag thug life. <laughs> no. Sure. Okay, to make a story, let's see what happened. So, I remember I got the vaccine back then, and everything was on the regular. Second okay. shot, got Moderna, and I did hear some bad stories about that. So, let's start with that. Two days went on, I did everything I'm used to. I went down to the gym, did my social lives. I went on a date Thursday night. That went on till Friday evening, something like that. Ooh. Yeah, I'm a nice. fighter yeah. or something. And then Friday evening came along and I just started feeling this fever kind of yeah. sensations. And I agreed with a friend, yeah, let's just go to the city at 10 o'clock. It'll, it'll be fine. And every step I took, <laughs> I was almost passing out. Everything was feeling like, bro, like, yeah, fuck this. I'll live through it. I'll see through worse. Yeah, I'm a very annoying guy when it comes to the health. It's like, it's nothing. We'll get to that. No, and I also had to, uh, a party to attend to on Saturday because yeah. I was inviting a bunch of people and I was feeling kind of responsibility. And the girl I've been seeing, she was also dropping by and she and my mom to her place afterwards. And I went there around 3 o'clock. We, we spent the night again, like the most of the Sunday before she had to go out and travel and see her family in another country. And she took very good care of me, actually. Because okay. I ignored all of the... Like the signs. Yeah, like kind of your symptoms, right? Yeah, it was pretty obvious that I was very feverish high, maybe a flu. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't care about that. I still have sex and I enjoy it. Like, you gotta perform when you're there, okay? When I yeah. when I agree on something, we fucking go. Okay, that's uh, that's some determination, that's for sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> it is. Stupid okay. determination. Because after we were eating and we just laid in bed and talked, I more or less fell asleep all the time. And I was thinking, yeah, I'm just exhausted. But thinking back hind, backside? Nah, thinking back, yeah. I think my body was collapsing more or less. Did you have the fever? Yeah, she asked like, do you want to check out your temperature? And I'm like, mm. maybe that's not the worst idea. So 39.8. Oh my God. Yeah, I was hot. Super hot. <laughs> oh, you were super more hot. More than usual, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. So... She took care of me. It was really nice. Appreciate her very much for that. And she was leaving at night because I could not get out of bed. I didn't want to go to the hospital because that would be a bit too much, I felt. Mm. Maybe I should have. But anyways, so at night time, something woke me up and I had to go to the bathroom. It felt like I had to puke or just get some air. Like I was suffocating more or less because yeah. I was so dehydrated. I went from, I checked it out later, I went from 100 kilos to 94. Okay. And just... Uh. Loss of fluids. Yeah. So there was not much left. And then that was first time at her place. So when you're like sleepy and you're not nowhere going, you don't know which way to go. So first I bought my right shoulder. Yeah. Then I bought my left shoulder while I was going to the toilet. Then I bought my back into the kitchen. And then I remember I was thinking, what the fuck is going on? And then I just go straight ahead and hit like the outside of the door. That's yeah, why oh you can God. see the space in between. Yeah, oh shit. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I gotta be- go, better get back to bed because I'm not functioning properly. And I was just stand. That's a good remix. Just give me a minute here. <laughs> Husmark, a proud sponsor. <laughs> Husqvarna, I think. No. So. I was laying there on my knees, on the, just thinking, 
man, I hate being sick. And then I just see drops, like going down from oh, my. The blood. Oh yeah, the God. blood. Oh. I was like, yeah, I need a cloth. And then I just went back to bed and laid down. I was thinking, oh, I should have just slept in. But I don't regret anything. Oh yeah, and I shaved it just for the scars to be better. Yeah. But looking at it in hindsight, the scars will take about two weeks more to heal. This will probably take two years to grow out with this freaking length. So eh, true, true. But yeah. I know, like your determination for sex is incredible. I, I appreciate you and I, I actually have a lot of respect for you for actually doing that when you had like such a high fever and feeling so like shitty. You know, I mean, that takes some, some courage, I yes. guess, something like that. Mm. Um, well, it seems like you had a pretty fun weekend. Uh, those were good three days. Yeah. More or so. <laughs> ah. And, um, I know for a fact that you have a little bit of charm that I can't explain exactly. I mean, I'll um, tell you already. Nobody can, not even myself. No, it, it's it's very hard for me to comprehend how you're doing these kind of things sometimes. But um, long story short, uh, me and Mirza were at the dinner together with some other people, and there was this situation that I think Mirza would like to say to you, in which uh, he was a really, really like how do you say powerful macho guy without even trying hard so mirza the floor is yours oh, i'll never get tired of those words no i don't know what happened we finished up eating the three course meal right yeah and then we made what was it we made space in the living room i think yeah we for, were for the sitting, dancing yeah we were laying on the couch and we were actually talking about the podcast and everything and <laughs> no, I was laying. I was just laying down on the couch like a bear, not caring about anything. Yeah, I was yeah, like, of course. And I was like, "Come on, closer," with a girl that was also there. And I was like, "What are you waiting for?" And then I went in for the kiss. Yeah. So basically, she she fell on Mirza on the couch because you kind of dragged her. <laughs> I did. Hey, she, <laughs> she, her. she walked into dangerous territory. I'll say here, like. Okay. Kind of dragged her. I did not drag that pure innocent woman to not. Well, she was older than me, so she would know what she was going into. Yeah, and that's even more shocking for me. She was older than you, so she should know better, but apparently not. Hey, childish well, charms, you know. Anyhow, anyhow, what happened after you. I know for a fact you dragged her <laughs> on you. She. Uh, you, you leaned for a kiss, right? And she actually rejected you first no no but then she went in for the one immediately after and then she asked are you flirting with me and then i was like yeah isn't it obvious and then we started making out yeah and so. i was next to mirza so it was fucking weird for me to see that <laughs> and to be there like to just lay there looking in another direction just acting like everything is cool where there was noises of like them french kissing very very deep deep there <laughs> i was in a moment okay <laughs> Okay, okay, not but judging. I no, not but at I all. do feel bad if anything would have happened, like more because we were at a friend's place. So. And there were a lot of people there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. And I'm shy. Yeah, no, not, not at all. <laughs> and my, my sur I, I was so surprised when I, I went to the bathroom, I left them there, and then I came back just to see the girl humping the wall. She was dancing with her legs spread with her front to the wall, occasionally looking to Mirza to drag his attention. And in that moment, I was like, I looked to Mirza and I was like, what the hell did you do to this girl? She was so, uh, I don't know how to explain it. She was so, with, with her head on, like, on, on her shoulders, she was so uh, serious in a way the whole evening. She never like got to a point where she went too far about talking about any sexual stuff or whatever. And then Mirza kissed her and then boom, everything disappeared. It's like she was another person. It's like you actually did some magic to her. One kiss is all it takes, falling <laughs> in love with me. That easy, eh? I don't know. I wanna know how, <laughs> how? 
You think I'll let you know in on my secrets? Listen, I would tell you if I know, but I have seriously no idea. <laughs> no. Just, sometimes just keep it simple. Okay. So. Well, you were very simple. You were just laying on the couch, just dragged her a little bit, tried to kiss her, and then boom. <laughs> yeah, but I'm an interesting person. Uh, yeah. So, why not? Mm. Again, sexual attractiveness is not fucking rocket science. No, so. it definitely isn't. It's, it's really easy. And um, for a matter of fact, I know that in the last episode, we were talking about Mirza kissing some guys. Oh, that happened and, again. Uh, it happened again? Yeah, I got, this, I got an Israeli guy, but he's a friend, so it's like, yeah, we're gonna make out. Okay. Oh, by the way, do you have a book in which you keep like, count of the no, nationalities? No, I really forgot it. You, you, you should get that. I mean, I know that there was this kind of thing that we had in Romania about guys just making lists of girls that they were fucking, so then they would remember how many girls they fucked and their names and all that. So uh, but, maybe you can just keep it more simple and just write the nationalities and then like, boom, when you get somebody that you haven't like kissed or fucked or whatever before, yeah. then you put them on the list. No, but thinking about it, it's not a bad idea. Because I was talking with this girl I've been seeing like about, you know, how many partners and then after we had the talk, yeah. I gave her the right number, but now I was thinking, how many nationalities have I kissed or had sex with or anything? Mm -hmm. And then I realized, yeah, I probably need a book. Yeah, so. I think that would be a good idea. <laughs> I don't know, would you, would you see yourself at like, I don't know... 70, 80 years old, just looking through that book, just be like, yeah, yeah I was a <laughs> I slut. Was a man. <laughs> 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 that would be actually cool. My badass grandpa, you know? Mm -hmm. Then showing it to your grandkids. <laughs> yeah, but that's the funny thing. I already met 100 nationalities in Odense alone. Mm -hmm. It's all about the, the social aspects and just meeting people at social events. So. Yeah, yeah, just go out and do it basically yeah but you still have to know boundaries and i can be a bit mm. too much i know that but it's just humor in my world because yeah i don't give a shit about anything so. yeah i know yeah, yeah. and you have also been telling me that sometimes it's hard for you to say if somebody's flirting with you or not because because yeah. they you meet so many nationalities and people are different like their actions are different depending on uh, their culture and where they come from so then it's kind of hard to say like is this a a person that would be interested in me or is it just yeah. how they are because of their culture or stuff like that and uh, exactly. I agree with you but um, I was telling you about this guy that um, uh, I went on a date with and it was actually really nice um, and I found out that he kissed you <laughs> and I was like oh my fucking god so this is the guy that Mirza was talking about in the other episode of the one podcast. One of them. One of them but apparently he was the first one and he initiated no. it from what he said. Oh he was not my first kiss but I was like. No but he was the god. first guy yeah. who kissed or who came with the idea of kissing in that night. Oh I was not his first guy that night. No but he was the one who came with the idea or something. I don't know. I don't eh, know. Happens, happen. Next. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> What's the latest nationality? Who the hell is last? That's why you need a book. Yeah. <laughs> you need the... You need to keep count. True that. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry for you. You must be overwhelmed with all these dates and, uh, you know, all these nationalities. You're kissing and fucking all the time. No. No? I'm not that much of a slut. Oh, like when oh, I see okay. a person, I see one person at a time. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm just... Mm. I'm horrible at math, though. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could actually say that by looking at you. I'm, I'm not saying that you look dumb or anything. It's just... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> completely explaining. Yeah. Nah. But, you know, it takes a lot of energy to date more people at once. Yeah, yeah it does. Because I also went to speed friending and it felt like the same every single time. What do you study? How long are you here? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And the first thing I did at my table was like, listen, I'll t give it to you straight. I was like, what's your name? Okay, we're not going to talk about education. Because if you want to get to know a person, like figure out some common interest if they want to do something together instead. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But um, so would you call yourself a monogamous since you're dating only one person at a time? No. No. I really wouldn't because I feel I still need experience and I wouldn't mind seeing other people. Okay, so, yeah. 
the yeah. one I'm seeing with now knows, so it's not a problem. Okay, but um, would you say that um, because you're seeing multiple people, or I mean, you're only seeing one person at a time, but you still want to um, like see more mm. people, would you say that you would be up for a, a poly, po polyamorous relationship? So, pa -pa -pa possibly. <laughs> possibly, yeah. Because I feel if there's one thing you got to remember is communication and sex and feelings are two wide spectrums. So if it's just like a one night stand because you just want to feel some adventure in your life and you already talked about it with your partner, it's fine. Yeah, But definitely. if you start dating the other person while you agreed on that, then it's some boundaries that I would not accept because... No, okay. So from your point of view, you wouldn't want to have uh, multiple partners that are your partners. I mean, no. like two, two different relationships basically in no. the same time. No. Because no, I feel if I really care about one person, I focus on that person and that's of it. Course. And yeah. again, it's a lot of energy. Yeah, it is. I agree. Especially you and I, we study the same thing. So we have to work, study, internship, social life dating like one person or two like already there is gonna crack at some point and yeah. then you're not i feel it's not gonna be the same feeling because you can all, always lay the same amount of energy in the different what are yeah. called the relationships mm -hmm. so one will probably feel ignored or overseen or used or whatever so you gotta yeah. tread lightly yeah i think it's all about the communication in these kind of situations i mean uh, it also depends on what you want do you want the main relationship that is your relationship that you put your grounds to and you uh, talk about it you do all these things together and then the other relationships are kind of like side relationships just like you know once in a while mm. hookups or something like that that is not necessarily any anything serious no. so it doesn't uh, get that much uh, energy out of you i would say right would you be up for something like that I could, but I don't think I have to, let's say, hard for it. Because when people spend time with me, I want to make them feel special or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know, but maybe I should also learn to shut out because different people look for different things. Yeah, of course. And some have a stressful life or hectic life and they just want to, you know, have fun for some hours and then yeah. next. And so. some people are just not built, you know, to have uh, monogamous relationships. I yeah, mean, exactly. some, some people are just... They, they just can't, uh, they feel like maybe they have the opportunity um, or they, if they are in a monogamous relationship, they don't have the opportunity to actually do something else and try something new with other people. And then they want to feel like they could have other relationships with other people while being with the main person that they probably love or something like that. Um, but then they maybe don't even want to use that opportunity for anything, but at least just to have it there, you know, mm, to feel yeah. like you're free, to not feel like you're in a cage, that you're taken by somebody. Mm. Because you are not taken, you are a person in your own, and then you can make your own decisions, I would say. So uh, in, on one side, it's, I would say it's pretty good. It's a, it's a pretty good thing to be uh, polyamorous, but... On the other side, could you live with the feeling that your partner might do the same? I mean, you know, you have your main partner and then they go and see other people um, and then you're just wondering what is happening and all that. Mm, would you think yeah. you would have a problem with that? <coughs> Sorry, dying okay. over here. <laughs> if I would have a problem. As said, communication is vital. And I think I would need to like be mentally prepared because if she's doing it, I'll probably do the same as well yeah so of course. that would be very weird if you agree to to see other like only one part is agreed to see other people but the other one is uh, only bound to one because yeah. i remember i actually did hear a story some time ago yeah so this guy he was in a marriage and all that stuff and his wife was what do you call it bisexual yes and from what the story goes they he made her agree to, like, they can have fun with other people. Yeah. But she could only have fun with women. I don't know, so no guys oh. allowed. So. That's a pretty interesting uh, situation. I mean, it's okay uh, that he wanted to see other people and that he was okay with her seeing other people. But I think just by putting... Uh, not a boundary how would you say like just putting restriction yeah a restriction like that it's it's not fair 
I mean, why would you uh, would you say that all oh, only women? Is it because you are jealous if it's a man? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She might then, develop uh, feelings for another Then man. why shouldn't she be jealous if he's dating other girls? She 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 could have it if that would be you know the uh, equal side of it. Then he would he should have been um, allowed to only see girl uh, men, men men. Yeah, but he was not bisexual. No, no. Oh. But it it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Like, who are you to put the restriction on somebody, even though you're in a in a relationship with them? I mean, uh, what ha- what applies to them should apply to you too. Uh, I mean, that's from what I see it. Like, that's how equal equality works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's not like halfway. I can do whatever. I can date date whoever I want to. But for you, it's only girls because that's what I want. But from also... that side, it doesn't seem like a healthy relationship anymore. It seems like a relationship in which somebody's controlling the other person for exactly. their own benefits and for their own. Um, feelings for them to feel better mm. and to kind of like put the other person yeah, down because i feel when it starts with one restriction that leads to another and another and then like the dominoes just keep falling down yeah. in the pecking order until mm. the person just says no and they start to be more like mutual in agreements yeah exactly but if i remember correctly they did divorce after some years so not a shock <laughs> not a shocking situation um, that's <laughs> life yeah yeah, it is. But how do you feel about polyamorous relationships in terms of age? I mean, if if you think like when you're when you're a teenager slash young adult and so on, it's fun and so on because you can uh, experience multiple things with multiple people yeah. and find maybe a right person for you at some point. But some people uh, might want to be polyamorous for the rest of their lives. And what if they want to get married with one of the persons at some point or they want to have kids how do you think that would play out like nah, that's a really good question would actually. you would you be up for doing something like that and be with multiple women and then just get married maybe with one before person before you go on anymore yeah. i think we need to like also ask our audience about this because i feel it's a very long and deep answer they could give yeah, out and i would love course. to read out some answers of so. course, we would like to hear your opinion on it and uh, see what you what you have to say about polyamorous relationship. Would you be in a polyamorous relationship and how far would you go? Or are you in one and yeah, what exactly. rules have you set for yourselves? Yeah, that would be really nice to discuss. If you have any questions or any kind of input, we would love to hear it out. And um, we can make another episode with uh, some questions or some uh, input Maybe from you. Maybe we could yeah. have some guests that are in those kinds of relationships. Yeah, that could be for sure. For yeah. sure, we will get back to you on the topic. Of course, if it interests you, just write us, tell us how you feel about it, and uh, we will see. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Mm. Yeah, that's mm. the thing. I don't. I don't think I would want to live that kind of lifestyle after no. I have the children, because I feel they just need two parents that take care of that, and also, yeah. congrats if you have energy <laughs> and time for that. Yeah, of course. So. I've actually heard about the couple. They were like three in a relationship. Two girls that were already together. Like they were together since like very young, 16, 17. Yeah. And um, wanted to get married. And then there was another guy. He came in the, there was a guy. He came in the, in the picture and uh, he changed everything. So then they all three got married together. So I think that's a funny story. I mean, it's it's really interesting how the dynamic of that works out. I mean, yeah, you know, true. the girls, they were... I don't know if they were bisexual. They were probably only lesbian. Um, and then they met the guy and then they became bisexual. And then they're all in a happy marriage. I mean, it's any guy's dream, I think, <laughs> to have two women. No. No? no? I would say Double so. Double trouble. <laughs> no. Like, I get the sex part. That's probably amazing and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. But you have to take care of two women as well, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, true. It's also funny because, you know, in, in nowadays it's not like men have that role of taking care of women because oh, women no. take care of themselves. But I think men in general, they still do have that feeling of, okay, I need to take care of the woman that I have next to me. That's my role. That's what I do. So I get your point. Um, but I think in that situation, actually the women are taking care of the men since they are too. 
But it's also nicer if they have to vote for something in the family, then there's always going to be like three votes, you know? So it's, it's uh, like, it's oh, a better yeah. chance for actually agreeing on something easier than, you know, to be... Yeah, but then the too... arguments started like, why didn't you vote with me? And hmm. stuff like that. True. So. <laughs> yeah, monogamy and polyogamy. Interesting topics. But I want to backtrack a little bit. Okay. Let's what do you have about, in mind? Oh, sex. But, oh, now? <laughs> Still sex. No. The book you were talking about. Let's say how you would set it up. The book? Uh, the one with the, um, with the nationalities? Yeah, you yeah. Mean? Like okay. My Little Black Book, I think they were called. Like, how my would Little you, how Black would... Book? Why do you have a black dick or why? I have a black soul. <laughs> but my dick is milky. Anyway, oh, oh, milky. Okay. I'm Caucasian. What do you expect? No, nothing. Nothing. Okay. So, um, the book. How big you want it to be? I mean, how, how big, big it is? It? Well, how big is it? I'm not complaining down there. It's fine. The book. Ah. <laughs> I mean. For now, if I wrote it down. <clears throat> uh, in detail, I would probably say what, twenty, thirty pages. No. How many and, centimeters? And, uh, how many centimeters? <laughs> yeah. Wait, erect or stiff? <laughs> I don't know. What What do you think it makes it better in your favor? I mean... Uh, centimeters. I don't know. Like this. And how much is that for the listeners? Oh. <laughs> 0 0.8, I think. It's some thin <laughs> okay. pages, you know. Okay. We are talking about the book. I would like to specify here. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what would you mention? Because usually I know people give it a what do you call it, a grading system. Um. Well, I was just thinking of you writing down nationality. So then just put I don't know Danish on one page, and then tuk, 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 names or like lines, tuk, 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 tuk. or you know just put lines. No, but it should not also be in terms of how much I went out, like how much it went, like if we were kissed, we had sex. Ah, and all that stuff. then you put, then you put, then you make it in um, in that like category. You put like kissing, fucking, both, oral sex, blah blah blah, and then you put the name and you put like X's, you know, like you you make like a table. You put like, like. Kissing, oral sex, sex, blah, 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 more mm. on like one co on the column and then on the row or is it the other way? I don't know. And then on the lines, like down, going down, you put the um, name of the person or the, no, the nationality, you put the nationality and um, ah, yeah, but, it doesn't work like that. No, I don't but know. in terms <laughs> of if you want to learn more from it, I just remember the good partners when you give it a grading system for an, one till ten in terms of kissing or oral sex or yeah. sex or whatever. You can do that too. Like, oh my god, that would be so harsh, you know. <laughs> Probably. But Did no. you ever thought of doing that with the person? Like, if you were to take, let's say, your date. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not okay because she's gonna know. Like the date that you had, like when um when you had the your accident in that night that you had fever like how much would you give her for kissing for fucking for sucking dick for that for that i mean i don't know if you want to say that listen here i don't yeah. have a suicidal wish but it's gonna be fine we talk in private about these things okay but she's great at most of the things so don't worry no okay okay is there any girl that you uh, dated at some point and you are sure you're not going to see her again and you want to tell us an example of your grading? <sighs> yeah, yeah, we're not going to see each other again, but that was just a one day thing. And I feel out the, like the topics we had to talk about were not that interesting. So not a lot of common ground. Okay, yeah. So, I don't know, for the kissing, it was weird for both of us because we just started making out in the hail. Yeah. It was like in April or something like that. So, but there was chemistry lacking. So yeah. we just one to ten. One to ten. I don't know, like a four or so. But then again, I'm very harsh. Yeah, you are pretty harsh. Okay, um, that's kissing. Then um, oral sex. With the one I didn't see, we were only making out. Ah, no sex. Okay. Oh, okay. that. Yeah. Oh wait, we also saw each other twice. Hmm. 
I don't know, for me, good sex is when I'm assured that I can make her come. Oral sex. From her to you. How was the oral sex? Oh, that was actually a good blowjob. Seven. Seven, okay. Oh, that, that's actually not a really good one if it's seven. I mean... I'm harsh, again. <laughs> okay. Like, nobody gets top grade. That's how this works. Okay, then Mirza, tell me, what is... How does a 10 look like? And blowjobs for you. Holy shit, I didn't even think about that. That's some porn star stuff right there. Okay, so, so you uh, see yourself like the sex you're having with a woman normally. Do you, do you picture yourself as in a porn? So they have to perform as if you're in a porn. No, not necessarily. No. Because okay. you know me by now, I like to act stuff and do the scenes. out. I don't imagine I'm in a porn. I imagine a character. And yeah. then we take it from there. Okay. So for yourself. Uh, yeah, for myself. Yeah. And, and what about and how do you I talk see with her? Them how yeah. they would like it, like this, this, mm -hmm. this. So. But how do you see her? Does she have to perform in a certain way for you to like be fully satisfied, or is it just her being natural? Uh, she has to at least look comfortable. So is that going mm -hmm. overboard? Because I yeah. don't want to hurt people. Like, of course, mm -hmm. I like to punish them and all that stuff, but to a certain extent. <laughs> don't look at me like that. <laughs> You want me to get out the whip, don't you? Not, not on me. Maybe on the guys from the production here. <laughs> yes. What about yes, you? Yes. You miss me? if I wrote a book. What's the... I know how often you... Okay, maybe I'm a bit too close. <laughs> so, I don't know. How, how much is your date count? I don't want to ask about your body count because that's probably too private, at mm -hmm. least for most people. So. I date count. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. And I thought I was the slut here. <coughs> mm, oh, I'm, I'm still sorry. I actually don't know dating. That's like a lot. Um, no, but I'm thinking more in the terms of if there's something going again, if you date the same nationality. If they're the same nationality, uh, yeah, I I have like of course I'm I'm from Romania. I had a lot of Romanians. Then here in Denmark, I had some Danish. And, um, but is there one thing going again with them? Or do you feel so at least? Going again in which sense? Like uh, Cultural or flirty wise or dating ah, wise. Yeah, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, Danish people are, <laughs> I don't know, they seem like they're scared kind of. They're very passive. Danish people are very, very passive. And I think it's because of the culture of the women just taking the power, you know, and the women have the power and then men are kind of like, okay, uh, we can't really get into their business because they don't want us to. So then we're just going to act passive and we're going to ask for dates and sex and all that. But it's just kind of like, do you want to? No? Okay, bye. You know, something like that. They, they don't pursue you. They don't try to pursue you. They don't, they don't try to win you because they are... In a, in a way, um, afraid or they are just uh, tired of doing that because it doesn't work like oh, that here. Not. But uh, in Romania, the men are like very macho, you know, that kind of vibe of they are like just trying to fuck you or they are lying to you, just trying to get what they want. And yeah, they're I mean, like good and bad things. Much. They're like good and bad things because at least in Romania, then you feel like you're wanted, you know, even though it's, it's just for bullshit. one night. Yeah, even though it's, it's just for one night and you thought that, oh, this is the guy of my dreams. And then <clears throat> it's not. But um, uh, here in Denmark, it's in a way better because at least you know upfront what people are up to and you just ask, you know, it's just so simple here. You just yeah. ask, what are you into? What do you want? What are you searching for? And then people are going to be honest. But in Romania, people are not honest. They, they just say whatever they need to say in order to get what they want. And yeah. So when are we Eastern going? Europe. That sounds interesting. <laughs> I, I am going in a month. I don't know about you. You can join if you want to. I'll drop by for a couple of days if I have the yeah. money and the time. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Just set up some dates so we have something to talk about next time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Could Definitely. Definitely. I will have a really nice trip, actually. I hope so. Um, some dates. Some. Um, what is. Here and there. Here and there. <laughs> some things here and there. I I'll think see. I always see you as a squirrel because you do like them nuts. No. Oh, come on. I had no. to. <laughs> or well, you are nuts. That's maybe also something. A bit. Maybe a bit. A bit. No, not a lot. Just a bit. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, I would say like that's the major uh, quali- quality and I don't know. Hmm. The good stuff and the bad stuff about dating Romanians and dating Danish people and about other nationalities. Um, I From what I've seen, I haven't really dated uh, any Italians. Why not? Um, because I feel like they are very... Um, how do you call it? When, when they are like very into women, into a lot of women, like... I don't know how to explain it. I don't know, players? Yeah, what are you for? slutty kind of in a way. I don't know. Do you feel that you'd get objectified because with yeah, so many? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> uh, definitely there's something there about Italians. Actually, I did have an Italian at some point at my place and in the morning he made me pasta because I told him to. <laughs> But it was, <laughs> it was such a weird situation because... Um, I was at a party actually um, at the SDU, at the university here, and um, uh, there was this guy, he was nice, blah, 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 he gave me his jacket because I was cold, and then I uh, told him that I want to go home, um, and I started biking, and then he told me, oh, I actually live close to your place, I could just like come as well, and I was like, okay, and then I found him coming like directly in front of my door, like right where I was living and I was like what are you doing and he was like oh, I was just thinking that we could spend the night together and I was like um I mean by all means like you can come and sleep with me in my bed but I'm not gonna have sex with you because I don't want to and he was like okay that's fine with me <laughs> and then like it was weird because I was like why why but so literally you end up sleeping with a stranger Your neighbor, actually, more or less. Yeah, I don't know exactly where he lived, but he just said he lived close. Wait, did he try anything while you were laying? No. Really? I don't know. I was too drunk and too asleep. I know for sure that I didn't have sex with him, but I don't think he tried anything. I think he was also very tired. And okay. then in the morning, he, he made me pasta. Oh, that's good. But that was nice. At least you got <laughs> yeah. something out of it. Yeah, yeah. True. Um, but yeah, other than that, no Italians... Um, French again no sex but I slept with him in the same bed I don't know what the fuck this keeps on like happening but <coughs> sorry dying over here yeah but um, yeah I don't know uh, what other I don't know what other wait how often sex. does that occur to you like did you sleep over in your bed why don't you do often on the couch at least With some I did. Mm, With some rare. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that de- it depends. It depends. Mm. Like, um, when I was in a... That happened when I was in a dorm. Uh, so I didn't have a couch. Wow. I had a one-person bed. And then <laughs> me and the Italian guy, we were both like... Oh, like, that's fair. <laughs> like trying to squeeze in a one-person bed. But fine. It's fine. So that's why I was also so weird, weirded out. I was like... Why the hell don't you go to your place, dude? <laughs> That yeah. makes good sense. I, yeah. would say. I was thinking we could make like a nasty list. So then we have like a mini like book, log book, <laughs> in which you oh, yeah. just put your your people, like the people you... I was uh, so sure you were going to say your penis. Yeah, go ahead. You can also put your penis in there. I mean, you can start the book. We can, we can start the book. Oh, that would be so cool if you're a guy. Then we start the book with the size of your penis and like, like all the... Like <laughs> you think they'll be willing to do that though. Yeah, it's like your ID. Like you start the page with like things about you and then you put things about other people <laughs> and like grading and stuff. Yeah. And for women, it's like the size of your boobs, like your bra size. Why not the threes? <clears throat> like 90, 60, 90, like those kind yeah, of like yeah, yeah. measurements. Yeah, you can also do that. But if we, yeah, yeah, you can also do that. <laughs> We're just ideas spraying here. If you have any ideas for the template, let us know. We're more than willing to listen. Yeah, it, it it would actually be really cool. The nasty list. The nasty book. The nasty list. And in the book. The nasty book. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Well, um, I think that's it for today, right? Do you have anything else? 
Sadly, no. My sex adventures are on hold because I'm sick, as you might have noticed by now. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Same for me, actually. I, I'm, I really don't feel like dating. I don't know. It's, it's a weird period in my life. I, I'm rejecting everything that comes my way. And I'm um, very passive. But do you feel you're stressed out and that's why you don't date? Or yeah. You just got exhausted because men are so freaking easy. Like, it's pissing me yeah. off, kind of. Because I feel we give off power so too easily. Like. Yeah, but that's your job. I mean... <laughs> really? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I feel like that's how it should be. But it, it depends, of course, on every people, person's opinion. But I feel like... <laughs> Men are the ones who are supposed to hunt and women are the ones who are supposed to like be like, okay, I'm just going to let myself be caught this time. Mm. Wait, what, how would you feel if you had to do the opposite thing? Because I don't see anything wrong with the women being a hunter. So. Um, from my perception, there is something wrong with it. And it's because the man's brain works in a certain way. And if men are not the ones who are pursuing the women, then they are not going to enjoy the relationship because for men is all about you know uh getting it like earning it if you're not earning it then what's the point if like do you think pizza tastes as good if you order it or if you make it yourself oh it, when i order because i don't have to do shit yeah but like isn't it isn't it too easy sometimes it is i know exactly what you're on about yeah it, it's too easy if women would do the men's job and that has been there for like generations and years and like everything like the men are the one who are pursuing women because of a certain reason it's not just because men are more horny and that's why oh on the contrary with time women get more horny like with age it goes to opposite men go down in testosterone women go up yeah but it's also something that comes to like I don't know, it, it depends on the relationships. If you're in a long-term relationship with somebody, then men probably still have their drive like up and they want to oh, masturbate yeah. and have sex and all that. And women go down in their uh, sex drive because, you know, because they have it at their fingertip. Like, why should they even want it oh, in the yeah. first place if you have it all the time? You know, it's, um, I think it's something that occurs. Like, something that, it, it is like that in, in every situation, I think, in our lives. If we have something, we don't appreciate it and we don't need it as much as if we don't have it. Because if we don't have it, then we're like, ah, oh, how would it be to have it? And then if we have it, it's like, ah, I already know how it is. Ah, it's not that interesting anymore. Ah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I think that's how it is. And probably that's what I'm experiencing right now. I'm kind of like, okay, I've, I have it at my fingertip, so I don't want it. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. But I also feel when you like desperately hunt for something, it doesn't arrive as it should. But when you just focus on yourself, it comes along somehow. Really yeah, well. like it's it's definitely true. Um, at the point where I uh, broke up with my ex-boyfriend, I was, you know, I was hurt. I just wanted to date. I just wanted to meet guys and so on. And I was so desperate of finding another relationship in a way because I wanted that attention and I wanted to like kind of that person to kind of heal me in a way. And um, now it's so different because now I'm healed. I don't have any like problems that come from that relationship anymore and now i don't want anything anymore because i realize that i there's nothing that a man can give me right now that can make me happier than what i can give myself yeah, exactly. so for this time being right now i'm just fine on my own um but we'll see later i might need some attention <laughs> talk with her again after new year's you know new year new me as i say yeah yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the Ooh, new... But maybe something will happen in Romania. You never know. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I, I live... I live <laughs> oh, that's like, a reaction. Like, dating thing and just, like, hooking up maybe, but just, hmm. you know, like, relationship-wise, no things. No. Yeah, never. that makes sense. Yeah. I live here, so it wouldn't really work. <laughs> yeah. We hope you enjoyed. This was the Nasty Sock with Mirza and... And Nicoletta. And... Have a nice week, everybody. Yes. See you soon. Bye.